Hello learners, today we are going to talk about meaningful learning in learner familiar and local specific context. There we are going to talk about education of the disadvantaged children. Now the question comes, who are the disadvantaged children? Girls, children of minority group, scheduled class, scheduled tribe children and children with special needs. Those who are also called children with disability are considered as the disadvantaged children. Now. We are going to talk about in this presentation today about the girl's child in the part one of this, uh, of this presentation. The girl's child are neglect in general undesirable attitude that many people shows towards them regarding their education normally seen in India. Both in family and the community even at the school, the education of the girl's child is usually not taken very seriously. And such an epidemic neglect can be found in any part of our country irrespective of financial status of the family. You can even see that girl child education is neglected in the lower class, sometimes in the middle class, you can say the personal reasons or even sometimes in the upper class also. Nearly half of the children, child population and potential future mothers are given casual treatment so far as the basic and foundation education is concerned. Because the girl child, why girl education is so important? Why do we have to focus on girls education? What is the need to promote that? Because the question, uh, the answer comes here that by educating a boy, an individual is educated. But when a girl is educated, a generation is educated. And as you know, that girl child later on got married in the future, get married in the future and goes to the another family. So she basically educate two families. One, it's her pet maternal family and then later on the in-laws family. And she can also teach or educate her own children if she is very much educated. She can help them. Beside educating half of the child population, girls' education has more return in real terms as pointed below. Now, women empowerment. In recent time, women throughout the world have attained excellence in every human endeavor. Women have achieved at par with men and even have excelled in many fields, which you can see nowadays because there are some parents who are promoting the girl education their daughters are working very well in their particular fields. Like if they are engineers, they are working with males. If they are teachers, they are teaching in the college, schools, and etc. Education is the key and early education of the girls provide the base for it. And early education plays a very important and vital role in the development of any child. Specifically to context with the girls, they create a base foundation for their future. Education and efficiency in working place of women. If we talk about the female education, that also influence in increasing the amount of the time that women work. But in case of men, education has a little influence on their quantity of work. If we understand this phenomena better by seeing this example. Like for example, in schools, girls spend more time on their studies and given a little encouragement as compared to the boys. Gender sensitization, time to change the mindset of the community, of your parents regarding the, uh, their behavior towards the girls' education. The community needs to promote towards the girls' education, towards their empowerment. They should encourage their daughters in the family. Gender equality. What is gender equality now? The question comes here. And if we talk about in context to the education, education of the girls leads to empowerment and thus the reduced status of girls and women otherwise given a lower position in the family and in the workplace. You can easily see this kind of behavior of the community people, even in your family, if you observe your mother, your sisters and even if you see the situation or the condition of their in the family. A woman, a girl is always least bothered by the family members in context to the education and food. 
The female who falls in the hierarchy in family are given food later on. Now, fertility rate and economic growth. Higher is the level of education of girls, lower is the rate of childbirth. And this we are saying because as much as the girl is educated, she would be more concerned about her family planning and she can even easily aware of all the facilities are available for the girl child to plan a family and the society with lower fertility rate has a higher economic growth their financial condition is not that great that they can have the 10 children in a family if a female is planning her for her family by keeping just one boy, one girl or two child only, either of any sex, then the, they can focus on their education, they can focus on their health, they can focus on their wealth, they can even focus on their, uh, on their food nutrition as a parent very well. And she can manage her house very well and her fertility rate and economic growth can also be better in that context. Family health and education. Health of the family members is better taken care by an educated mother so as also is the education of the children in the family. Female of the family is educated. She is much concerned about the medicines expired date even she's also can read the name of the medicines she can be aware of that this medicine is expiring by this date that by this this she can be taken care very much concerned about that the person who is ill would not take a medicine which is expired which can create his condition more ill now next is improved child care. Yes, if a girl is educated, she's not only become a good mother in future, but can also better take care of the children in the family. If she is educated, she would help them in their education. She would concern about their homework. She would concern, she, could, she can even help them for their creative work and she can also take care of their nutritional level. And by that, she can improve the overall family life or family health and wealth. Issues of girls' education in schools. While the apathy towards the girls' child's education begins in the family, it also continues in different forms in the schools and classroom. See the dis gender discrimination gender biases are happens in our society are not only specific to the family they are actually prevalent in our society and you can see these kind of discrimination or biases even in schools like access and enrollment of schools the opportunities of having a school nearer to the habituation of a child is still lacking in remote areas specifically in rural context and in hilly terrain. In the rural area, the schools are very far. Even in the hilly terrain, the schools are not in the near vicinity of the, of the girl's child. Families do not prefer to send their daughters to the schools due to considering that they are unsafe for them and it's very difficult as the geographical conditions like hilly track, water bodies, forest, uneven land forms, etc. which are not considered safe in context to the girl child. Establishment of a neighborhood schools within one kilometer of child's habituation as per the provisions of Right to Education Act 2009 meet challenges of promoting girls education this was the initiative was taken by the government as we should provide schools in the near vicinity of the girl child so that the parent would not worry about the girl child's education and they should promote the girl child and they should enroll their daughters to the schools 
Enrollment of the girls in the primary schools has improved considerably during the last decades due to the persistence efforts made by through the which is called SSA in all states of the country. See, the government is also taking initiative to improve the girl's child education. Another unfavorable conditions like climate condition, which also affect the girl child education. Like while several infrastructure inadequacies, lack of required number of classrooms, small and crowded classrooms, rooms without adequate light, absence of toilet and drinking water facilities create uncomfortable situation for all learner, both boys and girls. Lack of separate toilets, water facilities are considered most unfavorable conditions for girls' students in the schools. Now the next, usually the girls feel fear, freer to interact with female teachers than the, with male teachers. But you find that in the rural context, most of the time the, the male teachers are found in the classrooms. More male teachers, I would say, which also somewhere uh, one of the reason for the girls to not go to the schools or dropping out the schools because they do not feel free to talk to them. Shortage of the female teachers in the schools also the curb that the free interaction of the girls' students. As a result, the girls' students feel constrained to clarify their doubts and solve their problems in the school. If we see the our society also have some kind of stereotypes for the gender. Like we always go with our understanding that blue is always for boys, pink is always for girls. The another stereotype is in the families like girls should involve in the more household activities and boys should involve in more in the outside home activities. Even girls are more concerned about the female, uh, family issues, family things, and boys are more concerned about that ki, that ki, what how they have to earn outside the family, what's going on, they have to be take part in that. So this kind of biases, stereotypes are are in the minds of the family members or in the community members. From where these they are the point from where the discriminatory practices are start. Like knowingly or unknowingly, we usually give less in attention to the girls' education and other problems they face in the schools and classroom. For example, in a schools, girls are asked less number of questions than the boys during the classroom interaction. You can see that uh, the, if there is a male teacher also feel to like to interact much with the boys. That's why they, he always asks boys to interact in the class more as compared to the girls. It is a general practice in the schools to assign gender stereotypes roles to girls and boys, which are again the gender discriminatory. Girls are more engaged in less physically difficult activities and more in indoor activities and games like cleaning of the floor, decorating the classroom, knitting, stitching and preparing toys etc. Whereas the boys are engaged in more physically challenging and outdoor tasks like the doing the errand, carrying heavier things, working in the garden etc. While we do not take seriously to a boy talking in a loud voice, we always as a society conscious about a girls who do not speak loudly. We always ask our daughters to speak very politely in the family, in the society, in context to that. The smartness of a boy is praised whereas a girl showing Similar smartness is not appreciated by our society members. Discriminatory provisions in textbooks also you can see, for examples, based on language, pictures and used in the textbook, very often depict a lower status of women. In textbooks, it is just an observation which I am giving in the uh, examples from here, from various textbooks, like one of the 
like not much attention is given on the issue of girls and women or on the achievement of prominent women in difficult different public and professional fields if you see the evs textbooks the topic of the family highlighting contrasting roles of father and mother the father is earning member and the mother role is to confine to housekeeping whereas if you see in today's society both mother and fathers are working they are considered as earning members and even the father also helps with mother but which is not shown in our textbook the picture of the same topic shows that the father is relaxing with a newspaper and the mother is doing cooking which is also shows somewhere that stereotype and also the gender biasness that yes father can also do tea cooking and mother can read the newspaper but it is not shown in language and social studies also you come across with such kind of discriminatory material very often recognizing such adverse depiction of women's role in textbook several corrective measures are now being taken to remove them now myths about learning performance we also believe as a society that girl can do this girl boys can do that girls are not appropriate for this but boys can do that there are lots of myths regarding that there are several beliefs about girls for example girls people think that ki such beliefs that people girls are poor achiever than the boys at any stage or at a grade level girls are poor performer in mathematics at any levels than boys girls are better in verbal fluency and artistic aesthetic sensibilities whereas boys are better in mathematical reasoning and physical motor abilities which as a society we do not accept what can you do as a society member to promote girls education in the schools firstly this is some solution which we are going to talk about that firstly bringing all girls of schools going age of 6 to 14 years age in the schools and ensuring regular attending of the classes till completion of elementary education because many time it is seen that the girls are enrolled at the younger age in the schools but later on they are the dropouts because sometimes they have to take care of their siblings so siblings care come on them comes on them sometimes they have to take care of the household work or you can say household chores which they have to take care so there are lot of reason for that so if we are continuous on we are continual continuously we are just keeping a track on their attendance then this is the another uh, you can say initiative we can take to promote their education secondly making provisions in the classroom and schools for improving quality of girls education the main aim of such efforts would be to provide adequate girls friendly environment in the schools and hence their self esteem self confidence and self reliance removing any social stigma and gender stereotype roles removing any gender biases from the textbooks and learning material making classroom interactions and activities free from any sort of gender biases which can helps girls to be more active in the classroom teaching now here we are giving some kind of suggestions or action points to attain the above objectives community mobilization continuous interaction with parents especially mothers is to be made for the enrollment regular attendance and performance of the girl children ensuring separate toilets for girls which we have already talked about that if we have the separate facilities of the toilet for girls and boys and if they are not available we should construct in the school system this is not only helps in regular attendance of the girl children and it also develops sound sanitation habits in them which they can carry to their families also availability of incentives in times girls in schools are being provided with several incentives like free school uniform free textbooks free readings and writing material from self shiksha abhiyan funds 
because that is given by the government involving girls in all activities it is a basically a teacher initiative which she has she needs to take to ensure the girls equal participation of the girls in all types of activities conducted in the schools not specifically to boys only more group learning teacher must create more scope for group and peer learning in which girls can be participated without any restriction bias free classroom interaction the teacher should create the environment in a classroom where she is not doing any kind of biasness with girls or boys both both should treat equally manner in classroom teacher can also do that bias free learning assessment in which a person need to attach any bias or discrimination while assessing the learning progress of girls the girls should not have any feeling of unfairness in assessment of their performance you may as a teacher you may also encourage peer assessment as a part of the formative assessment in which every child including the girl child feels free to assess others and help simultaneously thus getting motivated to improve her performance self shiksha abhiyan girls it is one of the program which we have already talked about earlier and this program focused 6 to 14 years of age girls as a part of the universal elementary education self shiksha abhiyan also focus on gender parity is rooted in the national policy of education which is 1986 1992 and the program of action which brought in the center stage of the issues of gender and girls in education national policy of education also states that the education should be transformative force built women's self confidence and improve their position in society and challenges in inequalities there are another schemes also for the promoting the girls education for example national program for education of girls at elementary level which is also known as an P E G E L is a separate gender distinct uh, but integral component of the self shiksha abhiyan meant for most difficult to reach girls which provides additional support for enhancing girls education over and above the investments of the girls education through the normal self shiksha abhiyan interventions this program also focused on the educationally backward blocks where the level of rural female literacy is less than the normal average and gender gap in literacy is above than the national average these blocks of districts which are not covered under educationally backward block but have at least 5% sc scheduled caste and scheduled tribe population where as the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe female literacy is also 10% below This program also select urban slum and enroll girls in the area reducing the dropout rates among the girl students providing life skills to them and also intensive community mobilization for girls enrollment and retention Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyalay this is the another scheme provides for setting up residential schools at the upper primary level for girls belonging predominantly to a scheduled caste scheduled tribe other backward classes and minority communities this scheme was set up for the educationally backward blocks where the female rural literacy is 30 below 30% urban area the female literacy less than the national female literacy and minority dominated areas residential schools are set up only in those educationally backward blocks which do not have residential schools at the upper primary levels for girls under any other schemes so today we have discussed about the girls girls education why we need to give education to the girls what kind of discrimination we see in our society and in the textbooks textbooks of the schools why how and why this education should should be given to the girls how it's important for them and lastly what are the schemes are working for the girl child in our country 
now today we are going to stop the part 1 here thank you so much